All right. Uh, next, let's look through uh, another fun example. Um, so specifically, let's derive a relationship uh, for the variation of CP with respect to P. Or put, different, put differently, um, let's derive an expression to show how CP, our constant pressure heat capacity, changes with respect to P. Uh, now, you know, a common misconception is when we say, how does the constant pressure heat capacity change with respect to P? Uh, students will often just say, well, it's zero. It's the constant pressure heat capacity. Okay. But remember, keep in mind what all these things uh, mean. All right, CP is by definition partial H, partial T at constant P. Okay, so if I were to look at a three-dimensional surface for uh, enthalpy uh, versus temperature and pressure, what this would correspond to is, um, you know, inserting a cutting plane at constant pressure, then that resulting two-dimensional surface, which would give me H is a function of T um, at that constant P. Right, this would be um, the rate of change of H with respect to T in that 2D cut. Okay, but if I were to change the pressure, that'd be a different cutting plane, which would result in a different two-dimensional surface. Right, so as I change P, I'm getting different two-dimensional surfaces, on all of which dH dt at constant at that constant P would be be different. Right, and so I'd get different CPs depending on my pressure. Right. So CP does in fact change with, with P. Don't be you know, deceived by, by the name. And so you know, as what the question's asking for is if I ever want to know, you know how does something change with respect to a given variable, you know, here P, what that would correspond to is you know, what's the derivative of CP with respect to P, right? Or since I know, um, you know my uh, yeah, I've, I've, again, it's a single component, single phase system, I have two uh, intensive variables that need to be specified. Um, so, you know, here I want how CP changes with respect to P. Uh, I'm going to need to hold uh, my second variable constant. Okay, and for my second variable, I'll take it to be T, uh, since by definition, CP is a relationship between HT and P. Okay, so namely, what the problem is asking us to do is um, what is the differential of CP with respect to P holding T constant, right? What is that equal to? Well, how do we proceed? Well, if I just look at partial CP, partial P at constant T, right? You know, we already know it's not just equal to zero because uh, CP is constant pressure heat capacity, as we just explained. Um, but I'm kind of stuck. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, well, I'm stuck, and so I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at the definition of uh, CP. Well, CP is by definition partial H, partial T at constant P. Okay. So now what's that? telling me then is essentially I have a total derivative of um, enthalpy. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to use our uh, simplified um, mixed derivative notation. So partial CP partial P at constant T then is, well let me write it out the full way and then we'll, we'll simplify it in a second. So if I plug in for CP, okay, that is the differential of H with respect to T at constant P, then I want the differential of that with respect to P at constant T. So using our simplified notation, I'll write this as uh, del squared H uh, partial T partial P. And since uh, for mixed derivatives, I recall that the order of differentiation doesn't matter, this would be equivalent to D squared H DP DT. Right? The order of differentiation doesn't matter. Okay. So, well, what exactly does that mean? Well, that tells me then that I could alternatively write partial CP partial P at constant T as being partial H partial P at constant T, then the partial of that. Okay. Uh, let me clear that. Ah. Sorry, uh, stylus. Then the partial of that with respect to T holding P constant. All right, so here I was kind of stuck because that's nothing more than a definition of um, CP. But now here, instead, I have partial H partial P at constant T. So um, can I work out an expression for partial H, partial P at constant T. 
yes. Okay. And so how we'll do that is, well, first I could look to see if I have a Maxwell relationship um, or heat capacity relationship. Um, I don't. Okay. And so what I would do to see if I could plug in a Maxwell relationship or heat capacity relationship, um, just like we were work, working out our uh, property changes, is I'll go back to my fundamental equation for H. So dH is TDS plus VDP. And I'm going to work out an alternative expression for the differential of H with respect to P at constant T. So to do that, again, I divide my differentials, in this case by dP. And I'm holding T constant. Yep. And again, in theory, these should become curly differentials, although this then begins to look a tad bit ugly. Okay, so then as I simplify, okay, now I have the partial H, partial P, at constant T is equal to, okay, T dS dP at constant T. Do I have a Maxwell relationship for that? Yes, dS dP at constant T is negative dV dT at constant P. So this be would become negative T dV dT at constant P plus dP dP at constant T, dP dP is just 1, so that's just plus V. Okay, cool. So now partial H, partial P at constant T is negative T dV dT at constant P plus V. So now I could take this, okay, since I'm stuck here, plug it in, and then I could differentiate. Okay, so uh, let's do it. <laughs> so um, how do I want to write this out to make it as simple as possible? So um, dH dP at constant T is equivalent to this. Okay, so I'm going to write this as V minus T partial V partial T at constant P. Okay, now to this I want to apply the differential operator. Okay, so I want to differentiate this with respect to T holding P constant. So now I'm applying the differential operator to that expression I just derived. Okay, and so as we work through it then, let me scroll down because I'm going to have to take this in, in pieces. Okay, so uh, first term, so the differential of V with respect to T at constant P. Okay, and actually, let me just write it out just for convenience or completeness, just so I make it clear, right? So um, this is just, you know, a difference in two terms. So this would be dV dT at constant P minus partial T, partial V, partial T, constant P, okay, the differential of that with respect to T at constant P, okay, so I just want to break this up in pieces to make it clear where everything's coming from, okay, so that would be equivalent to, well, the first term is still just dV, dT, at constant P, second term I'll apply a product rule, so it'd be, um, so let me just put the negative sign in there. So it'd be u v prime. So it'd be u, okay, then by v prime, it's dv dt at constant p, then the differential of that with respect to t at constant p. So that's actually then a second derivative, d squared v dt squared at constant p. So uh, u v prime plus uh, v u prime. So it'd be a dv dt at constant p, and then u prime would be dt dt at constant p. Okay, and so that's equal to well, dv dt at constant p uh, minus t d squared v dt squared at constant p uh, minus. Okay, now. This is dV dt at constant p, and this is dt dt at constant p, so that's just 1. Okay. So I see I have a common term, so this is positive dV dt at constant p, that's negative dV dt at constant p. They would kill each other, right? just cancel each other out. So they're what left with then that cp, or not cp, the differential then of cp with respect to p at constant t is equal to uh, negative 
t d squared v dt squared at constant p. Okay. Cool. So we just worked out that the partial of cp with respect to p at constant t is equal to negative t d squared v dt squared at constant p. Cool. Okay. And so let me insert another page. And since we keep looking at um, this specific case of um, an ideal gas, let's look at what's the variation of CP with respect to P uh, at constant T for an ideal gas. Okay, now you should just be able to tell me that it's zero, um, and the reason being, right, is definition of CP is CP is partial H partial T at constant P, and we showed for an ideal gas that enthalpy was only a function of T, right? So we already know that enthalpy is independent of P, and so CP then should also be independent of P. Um, and then, you know, that makes sense of why our um, uh, expressions for the heat capacity of ideal gases are tabulated as polynomials as a function of, of just T. Um, but um, we could also, you know, show for ourselves by evaluating this for the case of an ideal gas. Okay, and so the quantity of interest is going to be d squared v dt squared. And so um, let's work it out. So for the case of an ideal gas, So for an ideal gas, um, we have that uh, PV equals RT. So again, V is equal to RT over P. So dV dt at constant P would be equal to partial RT over P, partial T at constant P. P is being held constant. So P is constant. R is my molar gas constant. It's constant. So that's R over P, partial T partial t at constant p, which is just 1. Right? So that's just r over p. So then if I were to compute the second derivative, right, d squared v dt squared then, constant p would be equal to the differential of r over p, or r over p is just dv dt at constant p. The differential of that with respect to t at constant p. P is constant, um, R is constant, um, so this is just uh, the derivative of a constant with respect to T, okay, which is zero, okay. So for an ideal gas, uh, the differential of CP with respect to P at constant T is equal to zero. So you just showed um, that the um, uh, heat capacity for an ideal gas, okay, so this is for the case of an ideal gas is independent of P, right? Just like we showed that the enthalpy of an ideal gas um, was independent of pressure. So we did that by just showing that the pressure dependent term was killed off, uh, but you could have done it the same by actually calculating dHdp um, at constant T, which just would have been zero, right? The pressure term was, was gone, okay? And if you wanted to estimate, say, how Cp uh, changed with respect to pressure for a real fluid, well, this is something I could just go and calculate using a cubic equation of state. Beautiful.